All right, well, I got a few questions on the zebra wood end grain frame, but real quick, I wanted to uh, say a quick thank you to Brittany and Jed. They just wrote me the nicest note. They've got a channel called True Furniture, and they're out of Oregon. They also have got a brick and mortar store, and I find that fascinating. I'm, I'm really interested in, in business and how the internet and brick and mortar can sort of work together. I think it's uh, making that human connection when you have a small business uh, that makes people want to go to the business and see you online and buy things that you make. And I think they're doing a good job of it. So uh, check them out. I've got a link to their channel in the description. So the first question is from Ida Willis. And he asked me, why do I always slow down at the end of my cuts? And I think he's talking about the miter saw. And it's really to avoid tear out on the back of the cut. And also, you, you probably notice when you're making your cuts, the cutoff piece tends to fly. And by slowing down, it seems to not fly as much. And sometimes the cutoff is the piece that I'm using. So it's just uh, become a habit, I guess. Jason Kirk wanted to know, what kind of blade do I use on the chop saw? And I use an 80 tooth carbide tip blade. And I change that blade just about every six months. And it's really uh, amazing what a difference a good sharp blade will make in your cuts. If you're getting poor cuts on your miter saw, take a look at your blade. Lane Brothers Workshop mentioned that they liked the music that I used in the beginning of the video and, and that it was more like what I've used in the past. And that's just a, a tune from iMovie. And that's one of the hardest things is dealing with the music. Where do you get music that doesn't sound like everything else? And sometimes I'll get music from YouTube's creative library. Sometimes I'll get it from iMovie. I was hoping to make my own music, but I'm, I just don't have the time to really figure out GarageBand. I am going to uh, maybe do a project with my son's friend who's a musician uh, where I make him a cajon and he uh, makes me original music. So that's something that's in the works. And uh, the idea is that he would make a bunch of tunes and they would all be sort of similar. So when you heard the turn, you heard the tune, you would think of the show. That's sort of the idea that every time you hear it, uh, you think, okay, that's what the show's following. So uh, that's something I'm working on. Uh, hopefully that will happen sooner versus later because there's, uh, there's so many videos out there and they all have the same music because everybody's just pulling tunes from iMovie and a lot of people are pulling tunes from YouTube's creative library. So um, anyway, I just thought I'd talk about that a little bit. Uh, David Carlson, uh, were the brad nails really needed in the walnut strips on the outside of the frame? Yeah, I, I think they were. It made it a lot easier. Uh, I guess I could uh, have glued them and maybe taped them together, but uh, you really don't see the brad nails on the sides of the frame, and I did fill the nail holes. And that brings me to another question by, by Gary Moore, and he asked, uh, what did I use to cover the nail holes? And in this case, I used sawdust and five minute epoxy. And I used the sawdust that I was sanding the frame. I generally will sand the frame on a piece of cardboard and I'll use a, a credit card or something to scrape up the sawdust and then I'll put it into the five minute epoxy. And, um, and that works really good, especially on walnut. There's no stain on this frame and the sawdust and epoxy mixture has a, a very similar tone. So I'll get a nice close up of this, it's really difficult to see. And again, you're looking at the side of the frame, which you don't really look at that often, for, at least up close, unless you're uh, somebody who makes things like I am, where you kind of go in and inspect how things were put together, but they're very hard to see. So I often use sawdust and epoxy, and uh, I think that works as a, a good wood fill. Here's one from Harold O'Brien, and he asked, why did I use contact cement for attaching the zebra wood to the plywood rather than wood glue. And really it was just a lot faster. The one thing you wanna keep in mind when you're using contact cement, especially on something like end grain where it's going to absorb a lot of it, it's good to use two coats of the contact cement and that's what I did. Also, you, you probably have heard that wood glue doesn't have a, a great uh, strength when it comes to end grain. And so I felt that the, um, just veneering it with the contact cement was a good solution. Moof Gel 1981, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, do I use a 23 gauge or an 18 gauge nail? And I'm, nailer, and I'm still using an 18 gauge nail, and it's simply because 
I don't have the 23 gauge nail. I tried to buy one on two different occasions. Uh, one just last week and they didn't have it in the home. So I think I'm gonna have to go to my lumber yard uh, and get one because uh, every time every time I go there, I'm all excited to get a new nail or uh, they don't have one in stock. So I'll probably go over to uh, my lumber yard. It's a, it's a little bit out of the way, but it, it'll be worth it. Especially with all the frames that I make, a 23 gauge nail I think will come in really handy. This one's from Roger Ramos, and this has to do with the fan. I'm gonna talk about the fan a little bit later when I build a box around it and a cabinet, uh, because I am gonna to wanna to do something uh, once it starts to get cold out to insulate the, uh, the outside from the inside. But the question was, do I notice a big difference in temperature when I'm running the fan? And no, I don't. Uh, basically, I, I put the fan there to move the air along. A lot of times what I like to do uh, is I'll take my air chuck and I'll just blow the table off or I'll blow a tool off and that way I'll run the fan on this side of the shop and I'll have the window uh, open over here and it just creates a flow and, and I'll have my mask on and just kind of clear the shop out. So, well that covers most of the questions and I'm really having a lot of fun with this project. I hope you enjoy it. It's going to be interesting to see six months from now what kind of paintings were made and how the book turns out. I'm having a lot of fun with it because it's it's kind of forcing me to step outside of my comfort zone. When you're painting something like a tool, when you think of a tool, you think of precision, uh, you can't paint it very loosely, which is something that I tend to do often. So it's forcing me to tighten up and change my style a little bit. And uh, I'm enjoying it. And I think that the paintings will tell an interesting story when the whole book is done. So. I hope that you'll continue to tune in and check those out. Don't forget to check out the auction. This painting is still up at auction. And I've got two over here that they're not quite done yet, but I want to show you what they look like because uh, you kind of get an idea of where this is going. So thanks for tuning in. I'll see you soon.